Are you having trouble finding yeast? You're not the only one. If so, today we're gonna make my really simple no yeast dinner rolls that aren't really a roll. They're more like a muffin, but they work in a pinch when you're out of bread ideas. Join me in the kitchen and I'll show you how they go together. So let's dive into making these no yeast dinner rolls. Now guys, I'll be the first to tell you, these are not really rolls. These are muffins that you could make in a pinch when you've forgotten that you need some bread with dinner or maybe you know you haven't had time to make something else, but real rolls are made with yeast. This is just something kind of as a filler. So keep that in mind. I, I see these more as, as a muffin or like a drop biscuit, that kind of thing, but they're still really good and they're nice to have on hand. So let's take a look what we need to do. So in this bowl, I have a cup of self-rising flour. Now, we need to talk a minute about self-rising flour because I know some of you cannot get it where you live. And a lot of people don't understand that, this is my empty bag, that self-rising flour is different than all-purpose flour. So it's a very Southern thing. We use it a lot here in the South. And it just is all-purpose flour or a slightly softer version of the wheat that's used in all-purpose flour with your baking powder and your salt already added to it. Now, if you can't get self-rising flour where you live, all you're gonna need to do is, for every cup of all-purpose flour that's in your recipe, add one and a half teaspoons of baking powder and a half a teaspoon of salt, and it'll work just the same. So don't worry about it if you can't get your hands on self-rising. The other thing to keep in mind with this is that if your baking powder is old or if your self-rising flour has been sitting on your shelf for six months, it's very likely that that leavening has worn out, it's tired, it's not gonna rise. So a lot of times when people make this recipe, they'll send me an email and say, I made hockey pucks. They didn't do anything, they didn't work. That's because your baking powder was old. So please make sure everything is fresh before you use it. Now, into our one cup of flour, we are going to add a teaspoon of sugar. Now I am using granulated organic cane sugar here. You could probably get by with coconut sugar if you wanted to, but you have to remember that sugar also adds structure and lift to bread or to any baked good. So it's not just about sweetness here. So sometimes those alterations don't always work out. So keep that in mind. And then we're gonna add, and do not panic when I do this because we're gonna talk about why, two tablespoons, very heaping, of mayonnaise. Now, what in the world is the mayonnaise for? We have to think about what is in mayonnaise? Eggs and oil, right? So this is an easy substitute for those ingredients. If you needed to use eggs and oil, you could do that, but this is just simpler. So if you'd like a recipe for homemade mayonnaise, let me know in the comments below and I'll make sure we get a recipe up for that one too. But also keep in mind, you cannot use Miracle Whip in this because that's not mayonnaise. So just skip that idea if you're going to. So into this, we're just gonna add our milk now. I have a half a cup of milk. I'm just gonna pour that in. You could probably get by with using an almond milk here or some non-dairy milk if you needed to, that'd probably be fine. And these work great with gluten-free flour. So if you've got an all-purpose baking blend, I love King Arthur's gluten-free blend, that works lovely here too. So all we're gonna do is give this a mix. Now, we'll see how this does with a spatula. I probably need a whisk for this, but we'll give it a go here. And this is gonna make about six small muffins. It's not gonna make, you know, a ton. I wanna get those lumps out. So I'm gonna switch over. If you've never used one of these lovely little moon whisks, they are so lovely for smoothing things out just really, really quickly. This one's from Rada, I think, but it's so nice. So you can see how quickly that just smooths out. You don't have to get every lump. You don't wanna overwork it with the flour because it'll build the gluten up and make them too tough, but just a little bit will be fine. Now, let's get these in our muffin tin. This is kind of funny, but this is my old little muffin tin that I've been using forever. It's beat to pieces. It's literally like dented to death, but it's what I use for these. So we're going to put these in, fill them three quarters of the way full, and then we're going to bake it for, I don't know, 12 to 15 minutes at 350 degrees. So you can see they're a little bit, you know, on the thin side. That's quite all right. These are also great to dress up. So if you want to add garlic powder, you want to add fresh herbs, you want to, ooh, ooh, you want to put some cheese in there. Please be as messy as I am. It would make me feel better if you were. <laughs> Add some cheese in there if you want to. A lot of people do that. They adjust these in a lot of different ways and they come out just great. So I'm going to get these in the oven and I'll show you what they look like after a couple of minutes. Got our muffins out of the oven. Let's take a look at them and see what they look like. All right. Now, let's see if we can get one out. So you can see they get kind of lumpy and bumpy and that sort of thing, but that's all right. And they are hot. But you see, they're just kind of little and just right for having on the side with your dinner. And oh, 
so beautiful and light and tender on the inside. So that makes them really, really nice to have with a little smear of butter, a little bit of jam, whatever you want to put on them, they will be perfect. Okay, guys, stick with me because coming up, we've got more baking recipes and all kinds of extra comfort food coming your way. I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.